This is DG Vision Network. Experience the revolution. You're welcome to this program. Thank you very much. 2018 to some companies, to some industries, organizations, was actually challenging. It was mm. a challenging one for them. Would you say same for telecommunications sector? Uh, most definitely. Uh, I think that um, 2018 was a very challenging, tough, and fortunate year for uh, the industry. I say fortunate because uh, we were able to overcome some of the headwinds that would have uh, derailed the likes of Nine Mobile and MTN. Those are the two major big ones that I think uh, caused us great concern. And as we and as we enter 2019, uh, we know that the MTN issue is almost 100% behind us. I'm very confident that. There will be no more uh, government fines or corporate governance issues. And with even with well, with uh, with nine with nine mobile, we'll come back to that because you raised an interest in our question. With nine mobile, um, which we are happy that NCC and CBN were involved yeah. in the transition of this fourth operator uh, that Telology has taken ownership. So that's a success. You know, I must say it's a success because prior to that people were doubting. So that happened. And uh, we hope that the current challenges they're facing will be amicably resolved for the consumers especially and the employees of that entity. Uh, we also recall that SEC was able to license uh, five other InfraCo uh, licenses to um, operators now that are seeking funding and uh, looking to roll out in this quarter despite the fact that we have an election in less than 30 days. So if we look back at 2018, there are some lessons to be learned, not only from the government side, but also the private sector side. And I think one of the biggest lessons is that the investors are very shaken by what happened to Nigeria. Yes, yeah, still talking about the 2018. Um, well, you have said so much already talking about your assessment and achievement in 2018. But yes, looking at broadband also, we have congratulations to NCC statistics and additions that we have attained the 30%. In fact, it looks like we've gone into the 1% the broadband penetration. What are we looking at talking about in 2019? Are we looking at making it higher than that, like 50% if possible? Well, when you view broadband, and let's be very serious that we don't get consumed by KPIs because okay. I think that we'll be missing the point. Mm -hmm. We have to take this very seriously. Broadband is meant to increase GDP on average about 1.38% GDP growth mm -hmm. for every 10% penetration, okay. broadband penetration. Other countries have been able to achieve that. We as a nation are struggling with sub 3% GDP growth. Even in 2019, it's not forecast to be more than 3% growth for this year. So there's something missing. So yes, according to NCC's data, which we accept is 30.9%. However, when you look at the geographical location of where there's broadband presence. You know that we're talking about three states out of the 36. Now, please, three out of 36 is not really an achievement, which demonstrates that we have a lot more work to do. So yes, on the back 
or 30.9% subscription penetration, we now need to focus on unique subscribers that demonstrates the population penetration of a very important platform for our future. Since looking at the quality of service and all, we have the three A's that has always been our watchword, which is the accessibility, the affordability, and of course, availability of this predatory broadband. There are still issues around it. What's your take on this? Quality of service is a very complex issue. Uh, I'm not going to go into the technicalities because the technical debate has been discussed and debated year on and year out. Let's look at the social aspects of quality of service and the reality that we have on ground. We have situations where base stations are arbitrarily shut and we take the case what happened in Kogi States only less than two months ago where 150 base stations were shut down. We now refer to those that are stealing batteries that are located at the base station sites. We also can refer to those who are deliberately damaging optic fiber cables and insistently cutting fiber and then we have the issue of various threats to the lives of security that guard our facilities and then we have multiple taxation multiple regulation i think i could go on and on but i'll just stop there He's still talking about this and shutting down of base stations in Kogi State. What is the president himself doing about it? Is he intervening at all? Because is it not us as we know affect the election? Because telecommunications is extremely important when it comes to all of this. Shutting down of base stations, which shouldn't happen periodly. And we've obviously advocated as a body um, that the critical national infrastructure bill that has been sitting in the National Assembly for many years should be turned into law. So it makes it a criminal offense for anyone to damage or destroy uh, these type of infrastructures. And until you get that, there will always be these cases of attempts to destroy or attempts by certain parts of government to see it as a way of collecting revenue whether it's IGR or other means, uh, for other reasons. The NCC has stepped in, you know, uh, they have been instrumental in discussing with governors the importance of having 24 by 7 um, availability of telecommunication services, which means that base stations have to be up. And also to also get the support of the police uh, to ensure that the security and the protection of these facilities are maintained in certain states. But I'm happy that the governor uh, was able to respond in a manner that uh, enabled those sites to be uh, reopened. Yeah. Okay, even at that, now let's talk about the policy. Is there inconsistency in policy and then of course the challenges one is facing in the telecom industry, the taxes, the price, the infrastructure and all of that. What is that going to do in order to put all of this, make it a stable thing? It's, you know, it's about continuous dialogue, I'll be honest with you. I know that um, the industry has got to a point where decisions have to be carefully thought through both from the regulator's point of view, but also individual players in the sector. You know, we cannot just brush aside what happened to Etisalat and say, oh, that was just a one-off. It's demonstrating certain issues that are intrinsic in doing business in Nigeria. You know, ease of doing business is important, uh, but also the business environment that's created by these or doing business is even more important. And you tend to find that 
telecoms has reached a certain level of maturity now where making a call should be just second nature. It isn't second nature to some of those who have not seen a call or even made a call, but in those areas where there's a concentration and we have 165 million active subscribers, it'd be interesting to know where the concentration is. But I don't, you're a very smart person, you don't need to guess that Lagos is the place. So someone who's in Lagos will assume that because they get 24 by 7 that they can go anywhere in the, in the country and get the same type of service. But that isn't the case. So you tend to find that actually there are certain dynamics and issues that needs to be addressed. And what we in Atcon are doing strenuously is to uh, increase that dialogue with not only our members, our constituents, but also bring that to the table of government to say, look, these issues need to be addressed. We cannot no longer defer them mm. and hope that they will just disappear. I thank you so much. I've had a very good time with you. It's been highly informative and extremely educative. I have must <laughs> learn something new from you every time. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. This is DG Vision Network. Experience the revolution.